Hey guys. Alright, now I'm going to try and take apart the melted printer, so I've talked about it before. Um, I know from that angle you're not going to see everything, so I'll try and sort of talk through it and turn the thing around as I go. Um, first things first, uh, this one's obviously already missing the front part, I took that off when it got melted. Um, but the first step is to take this uh, loading cover off if you like it at the top. There are two poly drive screws at the top, get those off quickly. Good to have some sort of pot where you can throw your, all your screws. Not lose any. So this should now lift off. There we go, just like that. You have to load the tray, that was easy. Right, the next step. Yep. Our next bit's a little bit more of a fiddle. Um, to be able to get the, the access to the bit meter at the bottom, um, obviously don't know what the component's called, it's the, the block that looks a bit like that. I know it's attached to the rear loading tray, but that's the the section I want there. Um, that's located the back underneath all this stuff. And to really get to that, we need to take off these side panels. We need to lift out the actual uh, laser unit, which obviously is used to uh, print itself. And then we'll have to take out all the loading postures, the paper bay. Um, in the back here, so I'll show you this now quickly. Um, this printer has uh, an expandable slot for extra memory, extra RAM. As you can see there, so this is a little around module down there, um, and also above this there is a little panel, bigger screwdriver. Okay, uh, yeah, above this is a little panel um, to allow you to put a networking card in. Uh, so obviously you can allow anybody in the home, or even I guess if you gave it a IP address, put it on a server, you can allow anyone to print from any location. I do already have a, a wireless um, inkjet printer. The reason I bought one in the first place was to be able to print PCBs. So obviously I need to um, be able to print onto the acetate. And you can get some acetate that works with inkjet printers. Um, but apparently, looking at all the reviews of certain websites, um, the Epson printers struggle with this. And well, I have an Epson printer, so it's <laughs> a so yeah, if I turn that round, if I just see at the back there, you can install a, a network card in there. Alright, I'll take the paper tray out. Oh, that's the paper tray. You can see the, the damage there from where, from where it was melted. Okay. That's the tray for the actual link cartridge itself. It's not too bad, but it's a little bit bowed in the middle, so I don't think that's really good for anything. Um, now, the next part is to try and take off the side panels themselves. I'm trying to remember the way I did this before. There are several screws at the top here to get the laser section out. Um, this bit's a little bit fiddly, there's quite a few catches you can sort of prise off. Um, that's the fact I did this side first last time. And if you look under here, I know you won't be able to see, but there's quite a few catches. Help that it's um, deformed, but it's melted. There we go, that's the side panel off. You can see the, uh, the switches here are quite interesting. Uh, these are the LEDs, the stasis LEDs, and they've obviously got some plastic on the bottom and on the board inside, they're actually mounted on the left. And the switches of the triggered PTMs on the board itself, if I turn that around, uh, closer look there, if you can see how well you can see that, you can see the PTMs are there, and the stasis LEDs are on the side. Right. Before I can take out the laser module, I have to disconnect all these cables. So if I pull that out, there we go. Like so. One there as well. All these can pull through to the inside. 
like so. There we go, that side all taken apart. Now we have to take off the, uh, the other side. Right. Flip it around. This side was even more fiddly the last time I did it, so, so bear with me a second. Quite a few little patches. I've taken apart several Xboxes in my time, and the way this is fastened on is quite similar. But obviously with an Xbox, I've got a little tool that fits perfectly into these slots, so it comes off, so you have to use a screwdriver. Oh, there we go, that was easier than I thought. There we go. Now again, on this side, obviously, we can see we've got the, the rotating fan and everything here, so that's nice and simple. Um, I can't, last time I took this off, I'm going to try and leave this together this time, we don't need to take that off, I don't think. Again, that's to the bottom. However, we do need to take the, the laser out. Um, there are four vertical uh, positive drive screws in here. But I, I always use the term positive drive. I know my, uh, my housemate, Richard, uh, he's also doing uh, electronic engineering. Um, he doesn't think that should be called positive drive screws. I mean, I, I was always brought up thinking that this particular crosshead screwdriver is a positive drive screwdriver. Um, call it what you want. Doesn't really matter. Right, so I've got a couple more screws here to come out. Almost there. And the last time there was, here we go, there's one horizontal screw. There as well. The lazy in it itself. It's uh, full of warnings saying do not open it. <laughs> there we go, you can see there. Right, put that down there. There we go. Right, now we've got that off. Um, if I remember, yeah, there's one screw here and one screw here to take the loading tray out. So if I can get this back panel off, uh, you can see I can turn it around that way. There's this panel here, there's one screw over there, and there's one under here. You have to gain access. So, be careful with this piece because it's a bit delicate. I know I broke off. Oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Much better. I'll keep that one for the other printer. <laughs> right, so we can take these two screws out. So, one there, and there's one there. Fault finding exercises are always the best fun, aren't they? Right, now this whole section should slide up. There we go. Aha. However, I think I am actually going to have to disconnect this board. There's obviously a couple of connections holding it in place. Let's take a second. This could be quite interesting actually. I've changed, um, I was doing a, a bachelor's degree, but I've changed to a master's for one more year now. And my final year project um, does involve mains electricity. It basically monitors um, power coming into a device. And I've already created, as you look on my website, another section, a page for the um, uh, little step down transformer and relay circuit that I made. Um, but in my personal opinion, it's, it's very bulky. And I know if you ever look at the uh, switches you can get for like a mobile phone charger or anything like that, they're quite small. So I'd be quite interested to have a look at the back of this one later on at some point. I know this is also fairly big as well. There obviously is a, a way of doing it in a far more compact form. I okay, guess so the main issues are overheating um, and being able to step down, obviously, AC to DC with a, a full wave rectifier. Uh, right, I think that's all of the screws. Oh no, it's one more. Right there. 
one second. Okay, this panel should now there we go, come off. If I disconnect these cables here, there we go. So again, that's our power supply. Right, and now I've done that, I think I should be able to slide out that tray. I know this printer was working fine before it got melted and this section was right at the back of the printer away from the heat source so I think it should be totally fine and from the look of it it looks perfect so fingers crossed uh, my only concern maybe I know with some devices for example the Xbox um, if you tried to change the uh, DVD drive it would uh, they're, they're specially coded with a unique ID and if you just swapped it to another one uh, the Xbox wouldn't recognise it, so it's potentially this could be here, I guess. Uh, but we'll wait and see. So the next step, um, I'll end the video now and start another one in a minute. The next step will be putting this into the uh, one, the new one I got today, and then uh, putting it all back together again. And fingers crossed it'll work and um, solve the problem. But we shall see. So thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>